Okay, let's begin the 5.20 lesson, War in Vietnam. There is some debate about exactly when the United States became involved in Vietnam. A complex country with a sub subsistence economy, Vietnam was a French colony until Japan took control during World War II. After the war, it came back under French control. But an independence movement in Vietnam brought communism into the picture, and Vietnam became a divided country. At that point, the United States became involved. Eventually, six presidents, hundreds of thousands of American troops, and untold Vietnamese soldiers Vietnamese soldiers and civilians were involved in the longest conflict in U.S. history. Goals for this lesson. Describe the reasons for and extent of U.S. involvement in Vietnam before 1964. Explain justification for and results of the escalation of U.S. involvement in the war. And identify Ho Chi Minh, Diem, and the key American leaders of the war. Don't forget to go to Lesson Resources and grab your reading guide, Lesson Answer Key, and then you also will have an additional document, Reflections on War. All right, let's begin. Pages 832 through 839 for their lesson reading. Vietnam, Hot Front and the Cold War. By bringing the world to the brink of nuclear war, the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962 revealed the enormous stakes involved in the Cold War rivalry between the United States and the Soviet Union. In the wake of the missile crisis, two, the two superpowers sought to avoid a direct military confrontation, but the Soviet Union continued to sponsor the spread of communism while the United States struggled to contain it. In various parts of the world, the so-called proxy wars broke out between communist forces supported by the Soviet Union and non-communist forces supported by the United States. The most devastating of these wars be fought in the Southeast Asian country of Vietnam. Americans' concerns about Vietnam began to well before the Cuban Missile Crisis. In 1954, President Dwight Eisenhower warned that if one of the nations of South East Asia won communists, the rest would follow. You have a role of dominoes set up, he said. You knock over the first one, and what will happen to the last one is the certainty that will go, it will go over very quickly. This domino theory, along with the policy of containment of communist expansion, would guide the policies of Eisenhower and the three presidents who followed him. As in Korea, American leaders accepted the division of Vietnam as into a communist north and a non-communist south. But for almost two decades, they tried to resist the southward expansion of North Vietnamese communism. Fearing that a communist victory in Vietnam would inevitably lead to the string of others, American policymakers resolved not to lose ground in Southeast Asia. Beginning under Eisenhower, the United States poured aid into South Vietnam, where communist guerrillas, inspired by North Vietnamese, were trying to overthrow the government. At first, the United States sent only money and military advisors, but by 1965, it was dispatching tens of thousands of troops. A few years later, more than half a million American soldiers were serving in Vietnam, fighting in what would become America's longest war. To understand how America got so deeply involved in this conflict, it is necessary first to look back at Vietnam's tangled colonial past. Before we begin, here's a picture in the middle here of Ho Chi Minh, um, the North Vietnamese leader. Uh, Ho Chi Minh led Vietnam to independence from French rule, then became president of communist North Vietnam. Vietnam's colonial past, a divided nation. Throughout its history, Vietnam has been threatened with domination by stronger powers. For nearly a thousand years, the Vietnamese suffered repeated invasions by China, their giant neighbor to the north. Then in the late 19th century, Vietnam, along with its neighbors Cambodia and Laos, became part of the French colony of Indochina. During World War II, the Japanese displaced the French as Vietnam's colonial masters. Shortly after Japan, after Japanese arrived, a guerrilla leader known as Ho Chi Minh, he who enlightens, began organizing resistance to foreign rule. By the time of Japan's defeat, Ho had gained widespread support among the population, especially in the north, and amassed an army of 5,000 men. In September of 1945, he appeared to be cheering, he appeared to cheering crowds in the capital of Hanoi to announce the independence of Vietnam. But with Japan defeated, the French tried to reassert control over the country. Soon's whole for Ho's forces, known as the Viet Minh, were harassing the French army, launching hit-and-run raids, and then blending back into the countryside. Ho compared the Vietnam, Vietnam, Minh, Vietnam Minh as a tiger and the French to an elephant, declaring, If ever the tiger pauses, the elephant will impale him on his mighty tusks. But the tiger will not pause, and the elephant will die of exhaustion and loss of blood. American leaders watched this conflict with dismay. Many sympathized with Ho's nationalistic aims and agreed that Viet the Vietnamese deserved their independence, but they deeply distrusted Ho because he was a communist. <clears throat> 
After the Communists seized control of China in 1949, Hull received military aid from China's Communist government. Alarmed by this development, the Truman administration responded per by providing the French with financial assistance. By 1952, the United States was bearing about one-third of the cost of the conflict in Indochina. When Eisenhower succeeded Truman, he continued the policy of supporting the French in an effort to contain communism in Southeast Asia. In April of 1954, the president defended the policy by using his famous analogy of falling dominoes. But a month later, Ho's forces overran a large French garrison at Den Ben Pu, breaking France's grip on Vietnam. At a subsequent peace conference in Geneva, Switzerland, it was agreed the French would withdraw from Vietnam, which would be temporarily divided in two, with the northern half controlled by Ho Chi Minh and the southern half by a non-communist government. Elections aimed at reuniting the country were scheduled for 1956. But these elections never happened because the authoritarian leader of South Vietnam, South Vietnam Ngo Dinh Diem refused to participate. The United States offic government officials supported Diem in his refusal because they feared that popular hope might win the election and install a communist government throughout Vietnam. In the meantime, the United States had organized a Southeast, Treaty Organiza Southeast Asia Treaty Organization, CEDO, an eight-member alliance of countries committed to containing communism in the region. Early U.S. Involvement, Ike and JFK in North Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh established a rigid communist dictatorship in which the centers were executed or sent to labor camps. After Ho announced a program of land reform, communist officials slaughtered thousands of farmers for the crime of owning too much land. Fearing perse persecution for their faith, more than half a million members of the country's Catholic minority fled to the south. The government of South Vietnam was almost as repressive. Its leader, Ngo Dinh Diem, an imperious man who always dressed in a pure white suit, raided elections and jailed opponents. When the Viet Cong, a communist guerrilla group, began to launch attacks against Vietnamese government forces, Diem ordered his brutal secret police to root out communists and their supporters everywhere. Diem's harsh methods, as well as the fact that he was a Catholic in a predominantly Buddhist country, made him an unpopular ruler. Despite Diem's corrupt and impressive waves, the United States supported his regime. The United States worried that if it did not help Diem's government, South Vietnam might become the next domino to fall to communism. In February 1955, President Eisenhower sent military advisors to help train Diem's army. Ho Chi Minh and the Viet Cong regarded Diem's regime as a puppet government controlled by the United States, in their view yet another foreign power trying to rule Vietnam. At the same time, the Soviet Union and China though both through both direct and indirect means sent aid to the communists in both parts of Vietnam. When John F. Kennedy came to the White House, he took an even tougher stand on Vietnam. Kennedy, who had joined in attacks on the Truman administration for losing China, refused to accept further communist expansion in Asia. And with the building of the Berlin Wall and the Bay of Pigs disaster, America seemed to be losing ground in the worldwide struggle against the Soviets and their allies. In late 1961, Kennedy dispatched an additional 3,000 military advisors to South Vietnam, a number that grew to 16,000 by 1963. The U.S. advisors did not usually fight in combat, but they trained and organized South Vietnamese soldiers, supplied weapons, and helped plan the fight against Ho Chi Minh's forces. Kennedy also sent helicopters and American pilots to help the South Vietnamese fight the Viet Cong. Even with American assistance, Diem's forces were losing the fight with the Viet Cong, who now referred to, referred to themselves as the National Liberation Front, the NLF. Diem's repressive rule alienated most of the South Vietnamese people. His government had always favored the Catholic minority and discriminated against the Buddhist majority. In 1963, Buddhists began protesting throughout the country. As a sign of their opposition to the government, some Buddhist monks committed suicide by burning themselves alive. Newspaper photos of these self emoliations shocked the world, but Diem's government showed little concern. And here's a picture of a monk um, setting himself on fire. Those are very popular photos um, for their obvious, tragic, and shocking nature. <laughs>
By the fall of 1963, Kennedy and his advisors had concluded that Diem's corrupt and ineffective regime was no longer worthy of U.S. support. They authorized a group of South Vietnamese Army officers to stage a coup d'etat. American officials reacted with shock, however, when the participants not only removed Diem from power, but also murdered him. Less than a month later, President Kennedy himself was assassinated in Dallas. Under his successor, Lyndon Johnson, the American role in Vietnam would take a dramatic turn. Johnson escalates the war. President Johnson believed fervently in the domino theory. After visiting South Vietnam in 1961, he observed, The battle against communism must be joined in Southeast Asia with strength and determination, or the United States inevitably must surrender the Pacific and take up our defenses on our own shores. In early 1964, Johnson sent his Secretary of Defense, Robert McNamara, on a fact-finding trip to South Vietnam. McNamara reported grimly that the new South Vietnamese government was weak and the Viet Cong controlled some 40% of the countryside. Without a large increase in aid and a possible commitment of American troops, McNamara said, all of South Vietnam would fall to the communists. The American government's official goal was to keep South Vietnam aligned with the United States and defeat the NLF, which was aligned with the North Vietnamese communist government in Hanoi. In Hanoi. If that would grow goal required a direct engagement with the North Vietnamese forces, LBJ was willing to broaden the American involvement. In August 1964, an incident occurred that gave Johnson the opportunity to increase America's engagement in Vietnam. American naval vessels operating in the Gulf of Tonkin reported torpedo attacks by North Vietnamese patrol boats. The details were sketchy. The American ships suffered no damage or casualties, and some participants later questioned the accuracy of the reports. Nevertheless, the President reacted by asking Congress to pass a resolution authorizing him to take all necessary measures to prevent further aggression. Members of Congress rushed to support the bill. As one representative declared, the American flag has been fired upon. We will not and cannot tolerate such things. In the end, only two members of Congress voted against the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, which empowered the President to send troops to Vietnam without a formal declaration of war. In November, Johnson won re-election in a landslide, a fact that made him even more confident to assert American power in Vietnam. So that's important to notice that the Vietnam War was never a declared war, but because of the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, the president had widespread powers to send in troops without a formal declaration, not Congress, because that is the way the Constitution is set up, that Congress is the only body that can declare war. In March 1965, two battalion, battalion, battalions of American Marines splash ashore on the beaches of Da Nang, South Vietnam, to be cre greeted battalions. Okay, let me start all over. In March 1965, two battalions of American Marines splash ashore on the beaches of Da, beaches of da Nang, South Vietnam, to be greeted not by enemy fire, but by smiling Vietnamese girls with garlands of flowers. But within months, the same troops would be engaged in a fierce combat with communist forces. Ho Chi Minh reacted to the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution by sending his own soldiers into South Vietnam. In coming years, American and South Vietnamese forces would battle both Viet Cong guerrillas and the regular troops of the North Vietnamese Army. And here's a picture of them uh, landing to shore in Da Nang. Okay, from search and destroy to rolling thunder. Johnson appointed, actually I'm going to stop here because we're almost for our 15 minutes and I don't want to stop in the middle. So let's stop here and we'll continue on with the rest of the reading and the activities in the next part of this video.